three, two, one, and we're on. Power yeah, but don't look at the camera. One of the okay. one always kept looking at the camera. Okay, no, I won't look at it. Uh, no worries. Whatever. Say thank you, bro, for stopping by, dude. I appreciate it. My pleasure. No, man. It's the guy. Finally got you on here. Thank you so much for it's inviting the, me. I really appreciate it. So introduce yourself for everybody. Tell, tell us your name, what you do. So uh, my name is Jose Macias. Uh-huh. Uh, I work for uh, Guaranteed Rate. Um, I am a mortgage loan officer, okay. uh, retail loan officer. I've been doing it for, uh, for a year and a half as a retail loan officer. And I was a direct uh, loan officer for about, uh, it's going to be now 14 years. Oh, wow. So you've been in the business for 14 years. I've been in the business since the end of 2006, which is kind of where, you know, I, I got to take advantage of a little bit of the, uh, the boom, the boom. Yes. Yeah. So, so it's, uh, so you saw the craziness back then. I saw the craziness. I lived it and, uh, you know, and I went through the crash. Yeah. So, and now, you know, I'm, I'm glad that things kind of come down and, yeah. and we're in a good, you know, I think we're in a good spot right now. Cool. We'll, we'll get back to that for sure. Cause I, I have a lot of questions. We'll have a lot of questions and just conversation. So sure. What did you bring today, bro? And are you going to mix up, mix something up for us? Yeah. What? So, you know, since we're, you know, around Christmas time, you right, know, right. um, yeah, I brought a little cinnamon, cinnamon whiskey okay. and, uh, some rum chata. Okay, okay. So, uh, they, they call this drink a cinnamon crunch. Cinnamon, cinnamon crunch? Yes, sir. So, let's put a little bit of ice in the cup and, right. you know, we'll go ahead and... Uh, all right, we'll put your own ice. All right. Yes, sir. Um, I don't touch your ice. It's okay. Or I could have done this guy. So, put a little bit of uh, fireball water. Put the whiskey there. All right. And so... Chocolate. Also, you know, chocolate. Yeah. You get it in the system. So, that's a lot of it. Nice and toasty. Damn. Lo bueno que está frío afuera, so we're going to be nice and warm. Yeah. Just mix it up. Salud. Salud. Oh, that's good, bro. That's dangerous. It's real good. Yeah. First time you have it? Yeah, like this, yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. This might be my drink for a little bit. For yes, sir. Time. For the Christmas, you know, <laughs> yeah. time. You know what I'm saying? You see. So, let's start at the beginning. Where did you, where were you born? So, I was born in uh, a city called Guayaquil, which is a uh, coastal city in Ecuador. It's, okay. Uh, yeah. It's not the uh, the capital. The capital is called Quito. Okay. Uh, and it, that's in the mountains. It's uh, colder there, you know. Uh-huh. But uh, Guayaquil is a coastal city, and uh, it's a major city. Yeah, yeah. So very busy, and uh, you know, populated. So yeah. a lot of crazy stuff happening there. Yeah, for sure. How old? Were, how how old were you? Uh, what, you were born there, and you how did you live there for long? Or <clears throat> um, so yeah, I, I actually so I grew up there, went to school there till I was twelve. And then uh, when we were 12, uh, my family moved over here uh, to join the rest of my mom's family. Uh-huh. Uh, she has several brothers and sisters, yeah. and they lived here in Chicago. So, so my grandmother pushed. Uh, for my mom to uh, to to come over here and join them, yeah, um, because of the you know, obviously the opportunity here for us. Did you? Uh, so is, is it? It's a coastal city, then you say? It's a coastal city. So you live on the beach, about an hour away from the beach. So from maybe beach. maybe a little bit, you know, an hour and a half, maybe. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, it's uh, it was close to the beach, and we I remember going to the beach a lot during you know when I was a kid, which yeah. is great. You know, I mean, how can you go wrong, right? Right. Uh, especially living here in Chicago, I miss it. You know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely but uh you know but yeah it was uh it was great uh my mom um you know hesitated to 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 come over here with uh-huh. my dad because they both right. you know were professionals my dad was an engineer and he oh, worked wow. uh with the government and did his own thing um yeah. he was a civil engineer so okay. he made roads and yeah. then my mom worked for a uh for uh, uh like a big big festival they had over there and, uh-huh. and also worked at the hotel uh just kind of doing accounting and stuff like that so yeah and she was also uh you know somewhat of uh after that uh she was also uh, self-employed and 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 had a, a store uh where she okay. sold uh, clothes yeah. you know that she brought from here over there right yeah so did they um did you ever travel before you moved here did you ever come here before or- uh yeah we used to we used to take trips uh yeah. you know we i actually was baptized in canada 
In Canada? Yeah, in Toronto. Oh, really? Yeah, because one of my my mom's sisters uh, moved there and lived there for a long time. So, uh-huh. so and she's my my godmother and my uh, my god father and yeah. then my both my uncle and my, my aunt um you know so i got so i got baptized there um probably 1982 probably okay uh so as a baby so you know and we we traveled you know just come visit but we never stayed we always went back you know because uh my my parents had uh, good jobs over there you know so yeah definitely yeah. so how was it for you growing up there was, was so you had you had good jobs you had so, nice house and- yeah <clears throat> yeah we were i was very blessed uh my my mom and my dad you know provided very well for us yeah um we had uh we you know there's a there's a big disparity between you know wealthy and and unwealthy there's really no middle class there so right. um <clears throat> now it's different but you know at that point uh we actually had somebody that would cook for us you know mm-hmm. like a, a maid yeah and then somebody will come and clean our clothes and oh, so right. it was very very blessed uh you know yeah. and it was you know it was uh affordable right. to do that yeah, to have yeah. somebody come and clean your house and you know or cook for you or whatever you know so yeah uh we weren't rich you know but we right. were you know, kind of like higher middle class, I guess. Yeah. You know, it would feel like it because of that, right? Right. Were you the oldest, or you had siblings, or? Um, yeah. So I have uh, a younger sister and two older uh, sisters. Um, you know, so um, you know they're. How did they feel, when, or how did you guys all feel when you get? What? How did your parents tell you <clears throat> they were moving? To um, you know, it was. Uh, I I wasn't told. No. You know, yeah. I think I was being prepared because uh-huh. they put me in a in a nice school where they, they taught me, um, you know, subjects in in English. You okay. know, even though the, you know it's not the main language over there, it's right. Spanish. But yeah. Um, but I was uh, able to kind of, I guess, um, subsequently learn English just by listening to it. You know, all the time and and you know studying it, but you know never really spoke it over there. You right. know, but when we came here when I was twelve, it was easier for me to adapt um, and, and talk the language, um, you know, I still had an accent, but yeah. but it was easier for me to understand. And, and I was also a big fan uh-huh. of music, you know, you yeah. know, rock and roll and, and just anything popular, yeah. you know, I would pick it up, uh, you know, uh-huh. so it was uh, easier for me, I would say, to adapt. The, um, but I did not know that we were going to come and stay here. Yeah. I was actually really, really upset about that. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. They still, so the weather's over there is nice year round, right? The weather is, uh, yeah, it's pretty, yeah. I mean, it doesn't, it's like living in California, you know, mm-hmm. it doesn't get really cold. <clears throat> There's no snow. How was the, not in Guayaquil. Yeah. How was the, um, how was the weather shock for you here? Um, terrible because we actually, yeah. when we came, we, we came during December, like end of the year. So it was cold. Uh huh. You know, I wasn't used to it. I was 12. And, you know, I got put in school right away. So, yeah. and, uh, and when we came here, um, there wasn't really a big place for us to stay. Mm-hmm. And, and my dad came later, you know, like maybe a month or two months later, yeah. my mom came here first with my two of my sisters and me. So, and, uh, so there wasn't a lot of space in one of my aunts or, or uncle's house to all be together. Right. So I was basically, I stayed by myself for like a month no and way. I didn't know I had, that we were going to stay here. So yeah. next thing I know, I'm there telling me I need to go to school. You know, I stay with my, uh, with my uncle who was very, you know, very nice of him to kind of take care of me. Yeah. Uh, but it was like, what the hell's going on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, when you when you went to school, what was it? it was grade school, junior high? So or? it was uh, seventh grade. Seventh yeah, grade. it was seventh grade. It was uh, in the Plains. Yeah, uh, it was called Erquoy, uh-huh. uh Junior High. Okay. And so I I went there for like maybe three months. Yeah. Yeah, I made, made some good friends there. Um, and uh, yeah, it was really cold. I remember <clears throat> the worst thing was uh, you know, uh, I would take I would go the wrong way every every day. Uh-huh. You know, because I didn't know what the hell was yeah, I was yeah, doing. I was 12 years old. And, you know, my aunt would say, okay, you know, here you go. You know, go. You know, and I'm like, okay, which way do I go? I was like, it's that way, you know. And then I would go the opposite way for some reason. Yeah, so yeah. I would go into the end of the road and then, like, what, where am I? You know, okay, the school's not here. So I have uh-huh. to walk back. So I was always late yeah. and, and really cold by the time I got to uh, to school because I was walking. There. How did they, what was the, what was the, um, 
What was it predominantly when you went to that school? Era güero? Era um, yeah, it was, you know, mostly Caucasian, yeah. um, you know, maybe 25% Latino, um, yeah. some Indian, you know, some African American, yeah. but it was mostly uh, Caucasian. Yeah. How, was, how was that for you coming, <clears throat> coming from? It, I mean, it was uh, it was a shock, you know. Yeah. I wasn't I wasn't really ready, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I wasn't ready, so I was kind of brought against my uh, own will. Yeah, yeah. So I was DACA before DACA existed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, but uh, no, but uh, seriously, I mean, uh, it, you know, it's. I think everybody, you know, well, not everybody, but uh, most immigrants kind of go through that, you right. know, especially kids, you know, like because yeah, yeah. I had a set of friends over there, you know, I was twelve, yeah. so you know, I was. Uh, you know, I was just about to kind of go through, uh, I guess, puberty, right? Yeah. So I was kind of getting ready. Like, I'm looking forward to having a girlfriend or something like yeah, that, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, like, I, you know, uh, I'm over here uh-huh. uh, just trying to, you know, make new friends now again, you know? Trying to fit in. Trying to fit in, yeah. yeah. So, but thankfully, uh, you know, there was a soccer ball, you know, somewhere yeah. in there, you know? And that's what I did over there is, uh, that was my favorite toy growing yeah. up. It was a soccer ball. So yeah. I used to be in the streets. I didn't know the time. I thought yeah. I had me to do that. Uh, but yeah, I was playing soccer all the time. So when I saw somebody with a soccer ball uh-huh. in the snow, yeah. you know, I, I I joined them. You know, so, so you I think that um, so I made that help that helped you like <clears throat> integrate into, into definitely, definitely, soccer. absolutely. Yeah, there was yeah. something in common that yeah. I didn't have with anybody else or anything else in common with anybody there. Yeah, you know, there was nobody else that was uh, you know, Ecuadorian that I knew. You know, you know, I had an accent and Spanish, different like, uh, you know, I guess accent, right? In yeah, Spanish, yeah, yeah, different sure. culture, uh-huh. you know. So, um, you know, I, but I did, I did make some good friends. You know, yeah. um, there was a couple other kids that that started with me, uh-huh. um, and they were uh, in the uh, they call them ESL classes, uh, English as a second language class. Oh, okay. You know, even though I spoke, I mean, I understood English. Yeah, I still needed to kind of. You know, so that was helpful. That was very helpful. Yeah. So, and then where did you go? Where did you go to high school after that? Um, so then we actually eighth grade. We moved to the apartments behind the big, the big Rose in Rosemont. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's some apartments there. Yeah. So we lived there for um, for maybe about a year or so. Uh, yeah. So I went to Rosemont Elementary. Okay. Uh, so that was uh, almost a hundred percent Caucasian. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and that was uh, you know that's cool. It was inside a gated community. Uh, wow. You know, I don't know if you you know. I've heard all that. Yeah. So and that was uh, also you know a little bit of a struggle to adapt again. Yeah. You know, because that was my second time moving uh-huh. in less than a year. Yeah. You know, starting to make new friends again. Mm-hmm. You know, and then uh, but then again, I I did find a couple guys that were in my same spot. You know, yeah. they had just come here from, you know, from Mexico uh-huh. um, and, you know, we became good friends and we went through uh, all through high school through, through graduation. And uh, yeah. and so that was good. You know, uh, that's good. Did you um, after high school did, or did you play soccer and did you play soccer? In, in no, they didn't have soccer in uh, junior high, no. you know, as a sport. Uh-huh. You know, did you have it in, yeah, in junior high? Yeah. In junior, no, junior high, they didn't have no sports for us. Now they have them. Yeah, I remember there was basketball. Oh, they did. Yeah, yeah and volleyball, basketball. but there was no soccer. No, we had always And softball, too. Yeah. All we had was basketball. Yeah. But so in high school, you did, you did play soccer? No? So, yeah, in high school, uh, and we moved again <laughs> before high school. Uh, we moved to Chicago. We moved by... Uh, oh, okay. So you moved yeah, again. We moved again. We moved to my uncle's house in Chicago. Um, and we were there, uh, for about a year, uh, it didn't last there because it was just too crazy. Um, yeah, part of Chicago. um it, it actually was by the Brickyard Mall, you, okay, right you know, there on, uh, Fullerton, Organset. For Yeah. You know, yeah. So I was there for a year. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so it was the first time that I got, I was able to play soccer and, uh, you know, you know, and I guess organized, uh, team, you know. Is there a lot? So yeah, yeah, it was more Latinos <clears throat> there, no? A lot more Latinos, definitely. Yeah, a lot more Latinos. Um, you know, and then, yeah, I was uh, I was a freshman playing varsity there, so it was fun. But you know, it's like the people I was playing with weren't loved the sport, but weren't serious about it. Right. You know, they were into other things. Yeah. So <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> I had to kind of steer away from that, you know, because yeah. it wasn't just you know, it was drugs and stuff like that you know yeah so i think the team got suspended that the senior varsity team got suspended for for uh for doing drugs i think after the oh, practice wow. or something like that something crazy like that you yeah. know i don't remember but you know but it wasn't a good area um 
kids, you know, like all the time, fight, fights, crazy fights mm -hmm. inside the school. Um, and I remember my first day, um, you know, going into my freshman class, being a freshman, yeah, yeah. there was metal detectors at the door. So what high school was it? It was uh, Steinman's High School. Steinman's, Steinman's yeah. yeah. And so, so you went there for a year? I went there for a year, yeah. yeah. So it was Steinman's High School. So it was a big shock, too, like... You know, I mean, it's, this is this anything like that before, like in not, back home or no, not at all, no, so not not metal detectors, no, not in Ecuador. I mean, you yeah, know, yeah. <laughs> so it was, you know, it was a lot of change, you know, yeah. and a lot of adaptation. <clears throat> I just kind of just kept quiet and just looked and observed a lot, yeah, you know, and just try to kind of see where where I fit in, and which is. Do you think that's helped you a lot ever since? Like, now that you know, know, being surrounded by all kinds of people, you know. Um, just all kinds of diverse people. I think it yeah. helps me now where I, what I do yeah. to understand their background, yeah. you know, who they are and kind of talk to them in, in the same level, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? So, so it definitely helps. It helped me, yeah. made me into, you know, a, a successful sales guy, you know? Yeah. I think it does like without people realizing it, like, <clears throat> especially being like you, you live, you, you know, you came from Ecuador, you live, you lived here, everything else. Um, I see it like with Latino, with a lot of Mexicans where we don't, we don't fit in here and we don't fit in over there. You know what I mean? Like the old, you know, as everybody says that, you know, no, no, aquí ni de allá. <clears throat> yeah. but you get to, I think that helps you a lot, especially in sales and just in general, understanding people when you sit down with them and you talk to them and you, you under, you're, I think you're a little bit more sympathetic to whatever they're trying to do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and that's, uh, you know, that's part of just, it helps you in life period, you yeah. know? So, uh -huh. You know, just like traveling, I think, you know, traveling kind of does the same thing to you when you go to other countries or other places and you see how they live. Yeah. Definitely. You know, um, and then, you know, that way when you encounter some somebody or something or it can be anybody, mm -hmm. you know, you know how to communicate. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. I think that's that's what I was trying to say, like communication, like you, you learn to communicate on a whole different level compared to. And I think you even see it like you'll see different people like you talk to how they communicate with people you can tell that you know not that they've had shelter life but you can tell that they they haven't experienced as much as yeah and that's unfortunate for them you know yeah because they're kind of kept in a enclosed environment so yeah you know i always encourage everybody to kind of get out there there's more to this world than just illinois no yeah definitely right a hundred percent have you gone back to Ecuador? You know, we were, we were actually uh, there during March this year yeah. um, and I brought my, uh, my wife and my two kids for the first time. Oh, that, that was the first time they've ever been to? That was the first time they were there. And yeah. so they loved it. You yeah. know, you show them where you grew up in her? I showed them where the house I grew up in. I showed them around the city and we kind of traveled the, the whole country within like 12 days. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. So we went for, for a wedding there. We stayed there about maybe the whole, maybe five days. And then we went and traveled around Ecuador a yeah. little bit more we went uh it's very diverse i, I recommend you to See, go and visit it's on my list bro. it's on your list okay yes. let me know i got people over there i'll yeah. connect you all right if you want to go together you know i'm down all right. <laughs> yeah for sure no yeah. yeah south america is something that like i've had it in mind i i i i haven't traveled as much as i wanted to these last yeah. couple of years or whatever but yeah i'm gonna start traveling more again and that's south america is i have to go it's so yeah ecuador ecuador uh, colombia brazil Argentina, peru. peru is like i think i read recently in some article that was a number one destination yeah. to go to to uh machu picchu yeah you know so. yeah i, I want to for sure go there because i heard that um they were saying that they want to they want to close it because really yeah because too many people are going now uh, it's messing, too many it's is messing, messing up, up the, the environment ruins. yeah, yeah the ruins yeah i yeah. can see that you know but then they should you know close off some months right you know so yeah because when it rains and stuff like that you shouldn't should, have you shouldn't have people walking up there because that's 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 what it. messes it up right yeah i can see that plus their uh their food is amazing that and that's that's the other thing i've heard that their food is yeah Just, yeah amazing have you had it here in chicago i haven't that's you crazy. haven't well, all right that's where we're going after this all right i'm gonna take you all right we're, I'm yeah um, we're gonna go to rios this is america shout out to uh dino latinos where's that at that's uh that's over there over there <laughs> yeah right. i'll take you don't worry okay. i couldn't tell you i'm bad with directions and right, streets no <laughs> so after high so then when when you left that high school where did you go you went 
back to Rosewater. So, um, so after Stamets, we I went, we went to uh, rent a house in in uh, in the Plains. Uh, so I went to Main West High School, mm. which was kind of cool because I saw the same people that I kind of went to, you know, to school with in seventh grade for three months. You know, so I saw a lot of familiar faces there. Uh-huh. You know, and uh, it was a good school. You know, yeah. I mean, and uh, I played soccer there too. You know. Soccer is my go-to sport for my sanity, I think, you know? Yeah. So. And how did, how did, um, <clears throat> so in high school and all that other, like, did you ever get scouted by colleges or anything like that? Or yeah. What? So it was kind of weird. Um, you know, the thing with colleges and everything, um, I, I still, I had no, uh, I was still get trying to get my, uh, you know, my residency. So I was in process, right? Okay. okay. So I was in process. So, you know, if you go to, I, I did get a, um, scholarship offer from Western, uh-huh. uh, but I went over there. They were willing to pay for all my studies, but not for housing. Oh, okay. so then for housing, I had to get like a federal loan, and I couldn't get it at that time. Yeah. So then that was a change of plans, you know. So then, um, then I went to try out at uh, at an NIU, and uh, I did really well. But they were, you know, they were looking for running for runners. Right. They weren't looking for you know people with with skills. Yeah, yeah. So it, it just wasn't for me. So I just ended up uh, just going back to uh, going back home and went to uh, Harper College. Okay. In Palatine. Yeah. And uh, and that was awesome. That was an awesome experience. I was able to make a lot, meet a lot of great people there. Yeah. They had a really good program for for students. Uh, they had a team organization that I joined and uh, opened up, you know, my my world to other things. And we went to uh, we went to a uh, they had a they had really they had a real they had a lady there, uh, Juanita Bassler, who you know uh, helps so many people. Or at that time, I don't know if she's still there. I think she's close to retirement, but she kind of helped a lot of people and just uh, scholarships and all that stuff. She would like make it available for kids to apply and show them a roadmap and kind of being a counselor in some way. Yeah, yeah. So she helped me a lot because uh, she was able to give me a scholarship to be a, to be a teacher, um, which I didn't follow through because uh, it wasn't for me. No. Teaching is just not for me. It's, it's, uh, it takes a lot of patience, man. I, yeah. I just, you know, and maybe because of my experience, I, I had a, a job kind of internship okay. teaching Spanish to, uh, to maybe, uh, what was it, like maybe third graders, fourth graders. Okay. And it was like babysitting for me. So yeah, I just yeah. I just couldn't do it, you know. But it had me paid for my way through school, uh-huh. you know, to, uh, to maybe uh, the last semester I ended up paying myself because it, I just, I dropped the scholarship. Yeah. You know, I just couldn't do it. So I just ended up getting associates in arts and, uh, you know, and then, you know, I was working a lot. Yeah. What did you want to be when you were in high school? Like, what were you, what so were you I always had, a, you know, I always had a vision of me working uh, as a professional. I just didn't know what, yeah. how, you know, but, but I had a vision of me being a professional. Right. I always saw myself having a briefcase uh-huh. and wearing a suit and tie. Yeah. So I knew I wanted to do that. Yeah. It was becoming an attorney or, you know, some kind of business person and, right. uh, you know, and do you think, do you think that, your parents being professionals back in Ecuador had a, a big influence on you in regards to that? Yeah, absolutely. You mean like, in, in, was education a big deal for them also? Like, were, did, they, um, did they always like inculcar que te, that you had to yeah. study? So they didn't really push it for me because I always said it. I was, I wanted to do something. I don't know what, right. but I, you know, my whole purpose was that I knew school was the way to achieve or go to a different, you know, to a good profession, you know, and make a good living. Right. So I knew that, right? Yeah. But um, but they never pushed it on me. They always said, you know, whatever you want to do, just whatever makes you happy, right? We're gonna support you, you know. And so, uh, my mom felt ill, you know. Uh, she had breast cancer, so she stopped working, and so. Um, you know, one of the things that I wanted to do for my mom was uh, being able to buy a uh, to buy her house. You know, so so before I even got started in the business or everything, so I figured out how am I gonna buy? How am I gonna be able to uh, look into buying my mom a house? Right? Because right? I was very grateful for her. Right? She helped yeah. me, and you know, just you know, I'm a yeah, yeah. I love my mom. You know, no. I mean, okay. so so I wanted to buy her a house or buy my parents a house. So. You know, then I figured that I can either be a real estate agent, right? 
uh, or a mortgage loan officer, right? So um, real estate agent, when I looked at the job, you know, opportunities in the paper, mm -hmm. th there weren't a lot of opportunities, right? right. To kind of get started in that field. Yeah. Uh, I did see a uh, opportunity to become a uh, mortgage loan officer. Right. And, um, and they needed a bilingual mortgage loan officer, right. you know, in the suburbs, which there wasn't a lot at that time, you yeah. know, back in 2006. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I put together a resume, you know, with my ad jobs that I had, uh -huh. you know, and, um, and I did have some sales experience uh, in my resume and, you know, I went to the interview and, and I got the job. Uh, I bombed the interview. I remember it, the, the guy interviews gave me a pen and told me to sell the pen to him. Like in, uh, like in the movies like in the, well, and well, I bombed it. Yeah. I had no clue what was, you know, I said, Oh, you know, yeah. but he gave me the opportunity. He said, all right, I'm going to give you an opportunity. We'll see how it goes. If it doesn't work out, you know, you're going to be out of a job, but I'll give you the opportunity. Yeah. So, and, and that, that was, was it. And that was a start. Really? So th that, that was after, right after college? So that was, uh, right, right after college. So that was your, yeah. Did you have jobs before that? I did. I did have. Uh, I did have one sales job that I think it helped me a lot. Yeah. Um, it was. Um, it was selling radio advertisement uh, for an AM station. Uh, it, the the radio advertisement was for uh, safety, like road safety. So I would call uh, businesses, uh -huh. right? And this is, I think, I was maybe like nineteen or something. Yeah. Eighteen, nineteen, maybe younger. I don't know. I can't remember. But. Um, I would call, cold call, uh, like businesses, hardware stores, you know, uh, restaurants, and basically I would uh, adapt a, uh, like a script, uh -huh. you know, and I would sell radio advertisement, you know. So I would say, you know, I would call these this places and say, hey, this is Jose Macias. I wanted to talk to your, uh, to your owner. Yeah. And uh, they were like, who's this? Jose Macias, I want to talk to your owner. Uh, the owner of the restaurant, the owner of the hardware shop. Yeah. They're like, you know, and I can hear them asking, like, hey, uh, Jose Macias is trying to, you know, wants to talk to you. Yeah. You know, he's like, Jose Macias, I don't know him. He's like, oh, hang, hang up on me, right? Uh -huh. So, and that would happen a lot, you know, and, and you know, the manager's like, hey, what's going on? Like, they're not even giving you a chance. Like, yeah. you know, he's like, maybe if you change your name, you know, don't. Change your name. I'm like, I can't change my name. Would they give you a script? For they gave me a script. Yeah. But I just couldn't get through it to like do the pitch. Yeah, yeah. You know, that was my problem. Uh -huh. So then I, I said, okay, well, my name is Jose Luis. So, you know, I'm going to make my name Joe Lewis. Yeah. So then <laughs> Joe Lewis is, you know, the boxer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So then, you know, then they started picking up the phone. Yeah. Like, yeah, Joe Lewis is on the phone. All right. So then I would make that pitch and they would like sign up. They're like, yeah, yeah, that sounds really good. You know, I want to do the the safety, uh, you know, commercial on you know five sixty a.m. That's yeah. fine. You know, so so that helped me a lot. You know, just doing and feeling confident over the phone, and then yeah, you know, and and the sales for the mortgage was basically we would send out mailers, okay. people would call in, you know, and then I would you yeah. know sell them, you know, a mortgage. So it was a it was a radio uh, a radio ad for the yeah. for safety for radio safety. ad for safety yeah. yeah yeah I can't remember how it goes or else I would say it but it was it I was have, it was just like you hear on the radio that's yeah, yeah. that's what we would have to I I have one that um uh, they call me like every or every holiday they have it yeah and it's like a don't text thing yeah the first time they call me the guy got me like yeah. he was just quick on the phone right I had just woken up but yeah. he was just like hey you know. Um, how would you like to sponsor this thing? It's for road safety. It's uh, don't be texting and driving. You'll save lives. Blah, blah, blah. That's exactly what I said. Yeah. Yeah. And he is still. And yeah, he, you know, he said it so fast and everything else. I'm like, well, how much is it? He's like, I think it's like 300 bucks. Yeah. For like 10 seconds. And I'm on the radio. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, all right, go ahead. Sign me up. Then after that, they call me all the time. And I tell them, like, you know what? I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm that, not that's it. exactly what I did. That was yeah. my first sales job. Yeah, man. So. That was good, you yeah. know. And I still have a little bit of an accent, right? Yeah, yeah. I still do, but you yeah. know, I try to. I I work on that a lot. Yeah. It's so hard to get rid of that accent, but I think sometimes the accent helps though. You think so? I think it does. Yeah. Yeah, okay. like. Yeah. Now your name is Joe Lewis. So. No, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, the Hispanic Joe Lewis. So they used to. Uh, so you. So then after that. So after the radio. So then after that, you, that's when you started the um, the mortgages. 
Yeah, so I mean that was kind of what helped me get into sales, and then uh-huh. with the resume and everything, and so that you know I got into the end of two thousand and six, uh-huh. you know where you know there was a lot of those crazy loans, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, so I was good at that, <laughs> you know, good at sending people money, and you know, right. and people wanted the lowest payment, and you know, yeah. obviously I was just selling what they were telling me to sell. You know, at that time I wasn't aware of what was going to happen two years later. Yeah, do you think? Um do you think if you weren't bilingual, you would have gotten the job? You wouldn't have gotten the job. If I what? If you weren't bilingual, um, you know what? That's a huge help. That's a huge help. That's a good step into this industry and just you know where we're headed in the future, right? Yeah. So yeah, I think, um, yeah, like I for me, I I was sorry, but I was preach like you have to know at least two languages. You have to teach and, your kids, and I don't do it. No, no, you have to. That's yeah. it's huge. Like. I'll, um yeah it's just huge because think of it this way like i i honestly the jobs that i've gotten i wouldn't have gotten them if i wasn't bilingual i right. wouldn't have yeah you know what i mean because they i would i would have probably been on you know unqualified for it but that one bilingual thing is what really really gets you over that hump because dude we're at the end of the day like they say we're the biggest we're the biggest market out there we are the and biggest we're market getting, we're only getting bigger and i mean and yeah, we Spanish, were helping the economy, you know. Yeah, and Spanish Spanish is is a big is a big part. So you, if you if you know it, even if you don't yeah. know the job, they'll train you because they know that they need. Yeah, it. no, definitely. I mean, and and you know, I think for me and my wife, you know, it's uh, we want to practice our English that we are doing a disservice to our kids, right? Not to speak it in the house, right? You know, because it was hard for me to get rid of the accent. But at yeah. this point, like these kids, man, they need to learn. I'm going to have to, like, you know, it's hard, though, because, you you know, Spanish at the house, you know, like, we, yeah. you know, hey, pass me the olla or something, you know? Right. <laughs> they used to, um, I remember one time, we, you know, I, I used to bike ride a lot in the yeah. summer, and we were bike riding through North Riverside. They're not through North Riverside, through Riverside. Yeah. And we're bike riding, and then there, there was these three little kids that passed us up, and they were talking perfect Spanish. But eran güeritos, like, literally... Blonde hair. One was, I think, even red hair. Yeah, they were, you know, they were little, these little white kids, and they were, and they Como were talking Spanish. Yeah, <laughs> and they were talking perfect Spanish. We look at them, we're like, what the heck? And the nanny was coming with them, uh, you know, una Latina, and she was talking to them in Spanish. And I was like, what's like, up? Yeah, and I'm like, bro, I'm like, these kids, everybody needs to learn Spanish because these kids are the ones that we're raising those kids. Yeah, I mean, are, 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 I mean they become doctors. You know, it's gonna help them be, you know, yeah. meet with their patients and you know, attorneys. Yeah, you know, I mean, we're a mixed society. You know, yeah. I mean, let's just stop kidding ourselves. I mean, yeah. we are all a big melting pot. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, and that's where we are. Definitely. So, so what was your um, what was your first your first experience with mortgages? Like, what was your, your first loan was you were doing loans right away or? um so i was just i i can't remember that much you know at that time 2006 yeah. but um i was just remember being happy that people wanted to like refinance yeah, yeah you know and uh you know basically we would sell it and somebody else would set it up uh-huh. you know and just over the phone and it was just exciting. I love the competition. We had a competition going, you know, within the people that work there. Yeah. You know, I'm a very, um, you know, I love sports, so competitive yeah. person. Right. So I w- always wanted to be like number one, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, I was. I would stay there, work, and work on my craft, and and train, and read books, and you know, you know how to sell, and you know, and it would give me confidence, and that confidence would grow, and. And, uh, you know, and, and I love to help, too. I would also help my, my other co-workers, so, even though I want to beat them. Yeah, yeah. And what uh, what happened during the crash? Did you stay with that company, or did, how long did you stay with no, that company? No, the, the, you know, the crash, the clo- you know, a lot of companies closed down. So yeah. I ended up uh, going to work for Charter One Bank, okay. uh, and, you know, they needed a, uh, a mortgage loan officer. And so I ended up working there for a couple of years. Uh, it, it was just there's not a lot of money to me to be made, right? Not a lot of business, right. you know. But it was a bank, so you would you know get some clients that would want to cash out or you know buy something, you know. So mm-hmm. so that was helpful. And then I uh, went to PNC Bank, and I remember I remember at PNC Bank I had like twelve branches. Oh wow! 
Yeah, something along those lines. That's how bad it was in the economy. So I had like 12 branches. Um, I did well, mm-hmm. but it, it was, you know, still like very, very little. So I was one of the guys to survive the crash. Uh, I know a lot of people left the industry. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, I ended up, I think I left for six months. Yeah. Uh, I went into doing car sales uh, for Toyota. For Toyota? How yeah. That? that was great. Really? That was great. I loved it because uh, it gave me a different uh, perspective on how to sell, you know, customer service. Because it was one-on-one, you know, it's not over the phone, yeah. you know. So, uh, but mostly the, you know, uh, the training that they provided me was, was really good and, and, and it stuck with me. So. Dude, I, I sold, I sold cars for one month. You did? I, I, I was only able to do it for one month. It was hard. Yeah. One, it was hard. And then yeah. two, but yeah, I learned. So before, before I, before I, um, I worked for State Farm for like eight years Ooh. for, for agents. And I left and I went to go do that because they needed someone bilingual and the, the market, the market was already going to crash. Yeah. It, it was like 2008. I remember when, when I left and, uh, yeah, so I, I, I went and I, I worked, I worked, one of my boys was the, the finance manager. There. Yeah. So when I worked for him, they, they, it was literally like, I was the only bilingual guy there. So that was, that was the, that was the easy part. But what I learned, what I learned in one month there in regards to sales was more than I learned in. <laughs> anywhere like 10 else. years 13 yeah. 10, 10 11 years that i had before in regards to sales because it was a totally different beast man like scripts and you know uh, rebuttals mm-hmm. and just like everything like yeah. everything is so <clears throat> precise when it comes to selling cars it's ridiculous like, yeah yeah it's not an easy job because they can you know they can buy a car anywhere yeah. right yeah. so it's like but why you right yeah they yeah, had it down you, to a science too. They had it down to a science, right? You know, and so yeah, I was I was really lucky to kind of work in uh, you know in, in, in auto sales, and but then you know the uh, the thing is uh, I'm a mortgage guy, you know. Yeah. So when the mortgages kind of started back up, then um, then I went to uh, Guaranteed Rate. Um, they were looking for uh, somebody to work in the online department. And uh, I applied and I got the job and I was there for like four or five years uh, online with their online division that had just started maybe a couple of months before I started there. And, you know, now it's just, it's another beast. It's probably one of the top in the country now, but yeah, but yeah it was one of the first ones, uh, maybe second wave of group of salespeople there in the online division. And, uh, you know, I was, uh, I was licensed in a lot of different States, you know, and I kept my licenses. So now I still do, you know, California, Indiana, Texas, you know, Wisconsin, you know, so I have a lot of different other licenses, but just here in Illinois, Illinois you know, so. How do you get the clients from the other states? Is it by, by their leads? So, um, so at that time, they, there was their leads, you know, and then now I just, you know, have a database that I work. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm fortunate to have that database. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. How do you, so how do you like Guaranteed Rate as a company in general? I, I love it. Yeah. You know, I mean, they're very, um, they're always looking into the future. I think the, you know, they're always looking into technology, yeah. uh, facilitate things for me. Right. Um, you know, it's, uh, I, I, I don't mind it. I love the stadium. Yeah. Can't go wrong with the stadium. Right, right, right. I played softball there a couple of times. Really? I love that inside the stadium. No way. So, you know, so it's got spurts, but, um, yeah. You know, I'm, I can't complain, you know, and, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get better, you know, yeah. I think I'm good, you know, I mean, people tell me, oh, those are good numbers, you know, but, right. but I think I can do better. I think I can keep going, um, growing, you know, because I've only been doing it in the retail side for only a year and a half or maybe two years. Yeah. So, you know, so I'm doing okay. I, I would say, I think they got like 1100 loan officers and I can, I think I'm in, um, top 30, 30, 35%. So, oh, wow. so it's not bad. You're doing good, man. I'm okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, what would what would what would Jose today right now tell little Jose when he was growing up <clears throat> when when he when he moved first to Chicago? What advice you know, would you I would, give him? I would probably uh, say uh, <clears throat> now because soccer is my my love. Uh-huh. I would kind of know how to go about getting to a college because that was my dream to play in a college team yeah and i never got to do that so right. i would find a way to get there yeah you know um i expected a lot of my high school coach to help me out 
and uh, and he didn't, you know. Yeah. And I don't I don't know why. To this day, I don't know why. Because I remember uh, we were beating a, uh, another high school pretty good, and and I think I scored again, and he took me out of the, the game, you know. Yeah. So I was like, well, why don't you take me out? Like, you know, we're winning, we're scoring, yeah. You know, and he took me out. Like, so he wasn't very helpful, right? You know, and I don't know why. So, but that's that's key, right? Having a good coach. If you're in sports in high school. You know, it's key to have a good coach because that coach is going to talk to other coaches about you, yeah. right? And going to help you get there, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I could have gone on a free ride somewhere, but, yeah. you know, I just didn't have the help. And, and I don't know. I mean, you're in high school, you don't know. Yeah. Right? So I think maybe that, but, you know, I did, I did have no regrets. You right. know, I'm here, you know, I'm, I'm here and I'm, I, I love what I do. I really do love what I do. Yeah. It does not feel like work. You know, and that's key to anybody that to find their passion and, and, and to do what you love, you know, it doesn't feel like work, yeah. you know, and that's, you know, I see a lot of people that hate going to their job, right? you know, they hate, you know, you know and, and I, I, I'm like, okay, well then do something different, do what you love and find a passion and yeah. find a way, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you can make it, you know, right. so I, I was listening to, uh, I can't remember who, but they were talking to high school kids, you know, and in high school, you already have to know, mm -hmm. you know, you already have to know where you want to go yeah. in high school. You don't have to wait for college. Right. In high school, I knew I wanted to do something, be professional. Yeah. So at least you got to know you want to be a professional in high school. Or you want to be into cars or, you know, be a mechanic, you know, you know whatever it is, but you have to know in high school. Yeah. Don't, don't wait. Don't let time pass by right. and just, you know, keep working at it. Get into that industry. Yeah. Whatever it is. I mean, you can be a helper to, you know, if you want to be a mechanic or have your own shop, yeah. you know, go and change oil, you know, right. and start there. Eventually, as you get older, you'll see and you'll get smart and see what other people's are, other people are doing, right. and you'll eventually become, you know, what you want to be. Yeah. Right. No. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. If I could do it all over again, you mean like I would do a bunch of things different. Like Absolutely. You say, like you say, like I like where I'm at now, so I don't know if I'd want to really change it because then it would be totally. It would different. probably be different, right? Yeah. So yeah. like that's the whole. Thing. I'd probably be like a broke soccer player, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, so, and, yeah. and soccer players don't get paid well at all here. Yeah. You know, so I mean, it's so, you know, the odds are against you, Yeah, you know, for any kind of sport, you know, professional stuff. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. And I think it's hard, like, unless you really like, I think, I think your kids will benefit from that. Like if they get into sports stuff, you are, you'll already know what I mean. Yeah. But, yeah, like our generations that our parents never did that or stuff like that. Like, yeah, it's it's hard. You mean like so right. you gotta make it by yourself without any support system? Yeah, and that's a big thing. But I think that's gonna change, bro. Like, I if I talk to a couple of people and always talk, so like now, yeah, we're a different generation. I mean, we're first or first and second generations. So yeah, we we we're a little bit more um, savvy when it comes to the to the system. Absolutely, and being able to use the system for us and not against us like i think it is sometimes i agree i agree yeah and um, i'm looking forward to helping my kids out you know yeah. definitely um and whatever they want to do yeah, yeah you know i mean you know nowadays you know the only bad things like i i see constantly that like you know google doesn't need you know you to have a bachelor's degree or something like that you know yeah. that's 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 a bad message i think we're sending out you know how yeah so that's a good subject so what do you think about people that say that you don't need a, a, a an education or a college education? So well, you, you definitely need some kind of education, you know, you need to, yeah. you know, read some books or, you know, I mean, you need to, you know, smarten up, right? And so right. just being like a, a sheep, yeah, yeah. you know, and being told what to do, right? Right. You need, you need to be, you need to be aware of your surroundings and what's out there. Yeah. Right. You need to see what other people are doing and how they're becoming successful, right? Right. You know, and it's, you know, and, and it may be true in some ways because, you know, in high school, they don't teach you how to create credit, right? right? Yeah, no. In high school, they don't teach you how to buy a house, right. how to manage your budget, your money, right. you know? So, which is like, why? Why are you teaching me about, you know, I don't want to say anything, but yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying. No, I, I get you. Right? Like, yeah, they, they need to be. Any, I there had, has to be something. I had there, a right? has I to had, be some kind of change. Yeah, I had um, 
I went to I went to like a for profit college. It was garbage, dude. Like where I went, but yeah, I was look. I was throwing. Was it the, a University of? Uh, uh, it was a Westwood Phoenix Co- or Westwood College University of Phoenix. I see the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember Westwood. Yeah, or Dubai was it? Yeah, Dubai? Like Dubai. I ended up having to go to Dubai for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a big mess. Yeah, but. Now that I look back at the books and everything, there was a book, literally a book that said how to become the best employee. And it's like, <laughs> bro, like, how, you know, that's what they're teaching these kids. Yeah. How to become the best employee instead of how to become the best you so you could. Yeah. It, and being an employee isn't a bad thing. I'm not saying that. But what yeah. I'm saying is the book should teach you how to become the best of you. Right. And then from there, you decide. Yeah. If you want to, you know, what, you, what part, how you want to go about it. Yeah. I mean, but for someone to tell you, you know, like, you know. That's, that's that's I think that's the total wrong message you mean. Yeah, no, I hear you. I hear you, and um, I think school is good. Yeah, not for everybody, right? I mean, there's straight school. There's you can be a doctor. I mean, whatever you know. Yeah. For what I did, I took a general associates in arts. Yeah. You know, where you know you basically learn a little bit of everything. Right. You know, so I wasn't specialized in anything, but you know, it's just a matter of what you know. You gotta you gotta work at it. You know, nobody's going to help you out but you. You know, you have to have an idea or at least, you know, just be constant. Stay focused. Yeah. Stay really focused. You know, don't let, you know, people sometimes, you know, they're, oh, my friend this and my friend that, you know. And then years later, like, that friend is not doing good, you know. Yeah. You know, and and you you have to make sure you set yourself apart and and work on yourself and, and put the time and effort to be whatever you want to be. Do you have any like mentors that you look up to or that you go to sometimes for stuff or is it just, um, no. just self learn and yeah self taught self learn yeah. and just uh, knowing that I wanted to help my my parents out yeah. I think that was huge for me yeah just because obviously I mean we came you know uh, we didn't have any money you know we came we didn't have any money um, right so um, yeah I mean just just kind of wanting to make it, you know, I was, um, I was 26, uh, I was 26 when, no, was it 2006? I think I was 26 and I, uh, I was able to get into that mortgage world. Right. And then I was able to buy a house for my parents. Oh, nice. I bought my mom, you know, a house. So I did, I was able to accomplish my dream of yeah. buying her house. So, yeah. so I'm so happy with that. You know, right. that was like my, that's probably my biggest achievement. Yeah. Because I wanted to do that and I did it. Yeah. You yeah. know? And uh yeah. That's awesome. We lost that house yeah. to the economy. <laughs> to the economy yeah. You know, three years later, but yeah. you know, but I did it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not for sure. You know. So do you travel a lot still or you know, um, we've been fortunate, you know, to to have this year. Um, my wife, uh, she's, you know, the reason I think another reason why I'm, you know, so successful, I would say. You know, we you know, we're, you know, healthy, thank God, you yeah. know, uh, but my wife is a big, you know, she pushes me a lot to, to become better and, and she's also doing great. You know, she's back in school too. And, yeah. you know, and she's, you know, with two kids, two full-time jobs and she's, you know, working on her master's degree, Oh wow. you know, so, awesome. you know, we all support each other. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, we're, you know, we, we like to travel. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Where's the, where's the, so what, where's the best meal you've had? Best meal? Meal meal yeah one the one meal that you're like man like that was good best meal i've had Tra- uh, in your travels in my travels yeah oh man that's a tough question man i mean yeah. i probably probably puerto vallarta i was eating uh some shrimp and, and raw oysters by the beach yeah you know from the people that just yeah, walk like, around yeah yeah, yeah yeah they're like hey you wanna you want you know some you know shrimp on the grill and and some raw oysters uh, from fresh from the ocean yeah yeah sure you know that, that how sounds, much that sounds delicious. two dollars okay <laughs> you know the cheapest and the best you yeah, know yeah, yeah. just because it's expensive it doesn't mean it's the best yeah exactly yeah that's i think that's a big misconception sometimes yeah people think prices um, and you gotta be careful what you eat in the streets right but yeah sometimes street food is the best yeah definitely you know Yes, yeah, like in Mexico, man, like people will be like, oh, let's go to, um, I travel with a couple of buddies once and they want to go to steakhouse. And I'm like, bro, like, I want to eat tacos. Like, in the street. Yeah, like mm-hmm. I don't even go to steakhouses in Chicago. Like, Yeah. Like, let's, go to, let's go get some tacos. And, <laughs> That's you know, right. Some tortas. Yeah, now Chicago is really, really, uh, 
you know, uh, diverse when it comes to culinary here, you know, and, and we're foodies, me and my wife, we like to, yeah. we like to try new things and go to different restaurants. And so, you know, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go out to you after this and then you can give me some recommendations on, you know, your favorite taco spots. What a, so what's, uh, so if you're, so what's your, your number one go-to as a foodie for Chicago? Number one go-to? Yeah. Uh, right now it's the mariscos, man. Mariscos? The Nayarit style. Yeah. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, I know what you're yeah. talking about. Which one they actually like? told me that there is a place down the street here that uh you know where uh you know where uh Frank Thomas's uh, bar oh, we'll used there. to be. Well there right now. Is it open? Yeah, it's open. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. All right. Well then I owe you the uh Peruvian cuisine next time then. All right. All right, sounds yeah, good. Yeah, it's right it's right down the block. Yeah. Check it out. I'm down. Bro, thank you for coming. Yeah. Um, yeah. Running out of time, my little computer. For sure. The memory. I have to get a, a one with a bigger memory. You got it, my friend. Thank Bill, you so Bill. much for the invitation. No, I'm no. so happy for your success. No, no, thank you. You man. know, I think I'm blessed being here. It was a blessing uh, seeing you and bumping into you in Mexico out of, out of all places. Yeah, that was We a, bumped into each other. I'm like, yeah. man, what the hell are you doing here, yeah, you know? That was an awesome wedding. We had a good time. We had a, we yeah, had a it was a great time. At, yeah, yeah. Uh, shout out to Christian, but now yeah. and Natty. Natty. A wonderful yeah. wedding in, uh, what was it? In, in uh, San, uh, San Miguel de San Miguel de los Lagos. Yeah, no. yeah it was right. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm was, sorry. I have epilepsy by the way. That's why <laughs> I have bad memory. I apologize. La Lagos de Moreno. Lagos de Moreno. There That's you go. That's what it was. Lagos it was a Moreno. beautiful farm, man. Dude, the hacienda was fantastic. Yeah, it was. it was wonderful. Yes, loved it. That's my boy. Yep. Cheers. Cheers, bro. Salud, right, man. Gracias. Much love.